all of the soybean and cotton seeds that Monsanto sends to farmers around the world start here in Puerto Rico. While the U.S. territory drowns in billions of dollars in debt, its government is giving agrochemical corporations like Monsanto, now owned by Bayer, huge tax breaks to test and grow GMO seeds. And now some Puerto Ricans are resisting, saying Monsanto has not only cost them their livelihood, it's making them sick. I cry because yo, I think that maybe I will die. Why would you want to continue using a chemical like glyphosate that is being blamed for cancer? This is all Monsanto's. We just want them out of here. They're killing us with the pesticides, you know? They're f***ing us up. Why do you say that? Because I don't feel the same anymore. What do you feel? Watery eyes, itchy, you know? That stuff stinks. Alexis and his grandfather, Jose, live in a small neighborhood in Puerto Rico's southern municipality of Juana Diaz. Right across the street from their home is a field owned by Monsanto, now Bayer. Major multinational seed companies operate here, using this fertile land to test and grow genetically modified crops. Monsanto alone controls about 3,000 acres. Monsanto was founded as a chemical company in 1901. It was responsible for the deadly herbicide Agent Orange used by the U.S. military during the Vietnam War. Over time, Monsanto shifted to agriculture, becoming one of the largest seed suppliers to farmers around the world. And in the 1980s, it began experimenting with GMOs. GMOs are genetically modified organisms, and they've been modified for a certain function, like to be resistant to herbicides like Roundup, or to maximize harvest for farmers around the world. But the use of GMOs is hotly debated. Some people say they're helping to solve the world's hunger problems, while others argue that they're unsafe for our health and the environment. Now to the mega merger that's taking Wall Street by storm. In 2018, Monsanto was acquired by German pharmaceutical giant Bayer for $66 billion, creating the largest agrochemical and seed corporation in the world. Juana Diaz is at the epicenter of Monsanto's seed production, and residents here say the chemicals being used in the field across the street are making them sick. Y se nos mete entonces el polvorín a las casas envenenado. Ellos no se comunican y este, ellos no dan información escrita. O sea, ellos realmente no han informado, no han orientado a todos nosotros sobre el químico que están aplicando ahí. Do you close your windows? Ya. Bueno, si podemos hacerlo. Si no nos damos cuenta, ya, ya entró el, el químico. Y nos damos cuenta porque empezamos a estornudar, porque nos da dolor de garganta. Porque nos da dolor de cabeza, nos, nos pica los ojos, sentimos el olor fuerte. Siempre tenemos catarra, aquí parece gente de fatiga, dolor de pecho, cáncer. Monsanto has been called one of the most hated corporations in the world, controversial for its use of GMOs, for suing farmers who violate their seed licenses, and most recently, for serious illnesses linked to their trademark weed killer, Roundup. More than 13,000 plaintiffs in the U.S. now claim that exposure to Roundup and its main ingredient glyphosate caused cancer and that Monsanto hid the risks. And so far, several plaintiffs in California have won, with combined settlements worth billions. So we're headed to meet a former Monsanto employee who's agreed to talk to us on camera. And she says that her time there working with different chemicals got her very sick. Iris worked as an agronomist at Monsanto for eight years. She carried out experiments on genetically modified soy and corn. Es hermoso ser agrónomo. Es hermoso trabajar con la tierra, con plantas. Uno se siente parte de la naturaleza. Es un, un trabajo para mí que trae mucha paz. Pero en malos manos, pues es peligroso. Do you feel like Monsanto really took care of your safety? No. In my case, I use. Um, chemicals that are very dangerous, they stay in their clothes. I, I learned from the hard way that that's almost cost my life. Que hasta el día de hoy pues no he podido conseguir respuestas de, del químico que estaba utilizando. How did you react to exposure to these chemicals? Que cuando las plantas de maíz tocaban esta área que estaba al descubierto y esta área Eh, donde tocaba la hoja se inflamaba eh, empezó así yo estaba embarazada para ese tiempo y pues yo pensaba que tal vez eran situaciones del embarazo aunque era mi tercer bebé 
Edith says she later developed respiratory problems so bad she could barely catch her breath while walking. She said a pulmonologist told her she had the lungs of a 94-year-old and advised her to take greater care at work. She also says she went into anaphylactic shock three times. Did any doctors tell you you might die if you continue? Yeah. So when the doctor told you if you keep working there, you will die, did you stop working? Yeah, that's the last time I have. Tenía tres niños pequeños y tenía que decidir si quería estar más tiempo con ellos o me arriesgaba a volver a trabajar y morir. Ay, Dios mío. I cry because yo, I think that maybe I will die. And I, I, I think about my kids. Tuve que dejar de trabajar y el mundo se me cayó encima. Monsanto terminated her employment, saying she used all of the legal leave time available to her. Edith teamed up with a lawyer to find out the exact composition of the chemicals she was handling. Instead of answering her specific question, she says Monsanto sent her a list of thousands of chemicals used in the facility she was working in. We asked the company about all of Iris's allegations. In an email, their PR representative responded by saying the safety of their employees is their top priority, and that Bayer gave Iris all information required under the law. Monsanto's getting a sweet deal in Puerto Rico. As a seed corporation, it gets the same benefits as an individual farmer, including a 90% tax exemption, access to free water, and in Monsanto's case, close to $3 million in wage subsidies. But Monsanto also gets to use way more than the 500-acre legal limit that individual farmers are restricted to. The company, now officially Bayer Crop Science, agreed to give me a tour of their new smart greenhouse. They're trying to protect the plants from us. <laughs> Whew, it's warm in here. <laughs> so all this is soy. And so we have two crops. Okay. Here you can see cotton. This is cotton? Yeah, this is cotton, okay. little plants. These plants should have already maybe about 15 days after planting. And then here I can show you some soybean plants. So the soybean seeds that get shipped to farmers all over the world start here. They start here. It's about an eight year process from the moment that we start doing the, our research work to the moment that it actually it's commercialized is about an eight year process. Then, I got to see how they genetically modify their plants up close. They even asked me to give it a shot myself. I'm cross-pollinating soy right now. All, All right. right. You're gonna, you're gonna rub it here. Here too. And you're gonna clean. All right, so that didn't go according to plan. I have no future career at Bayer <laughs> or Monsanto. It's um, very hard at first, but dude, you get the idea. I should be an organic right. farmer. You get the feeling. Now that I experienced Monsanto's operation firsthand, it was time to ask some questions. Miguel Pereira and Eric Torres are longtime employees of Monsanto. Soybean and cotton, are those crops native to Puerto Rico? No, we have the right condition to grow that a crop in Puerto Rico, but it's not part of our normal agriculture in Puerto Rico. I'm interested in knowing about how Puerto Ricans are benefiting from the presence of companies like Bayer, formerly Monsanto here. How many jobs do you guys create? We it, it create around 300 to 400 jobs uh, between regular employees and, and seasonal employees. Yesterday, I was in Juana Diaz, in Arus specifically, speaking to locals there who live right across the street from your fields. And they complain about the chemical spraying there. Do you talk to them ever to let them know what you're doing? Yes, yes. We, we, not, 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 not only that, we have this model in which we continuously try to convey messages and to get feedback from the community. There's also, you have to also to, to, to take into uh, account that we are not the only agricultural company performing activities in the area. I know there's a lot of agrochemical companies in the area, but I confirmed with your security on the ground that the field directly across from them is Bayer. And they're saying that your chemicals are making them sick. So what do you have to say to them? Yes, remember, we are a very well-regulated uh, company. 
We, have, we are regulated by EPA, by USDA, but another agriculture, the Department of Agriculture of Puerto Rico. I'm, I'm sure that we follow all the rules that we need to do. We go above and beyond those rules, you know. We are pretty sure that all our operation is safe. It's safe for our employees, it's safe for the community. So are you telling me uh, to tell these locals that are saying they're getting rashes, they have itchy eyes, watery eyes from your chemicals, don't worry, it's all safe? No, I, I'm pretty sure that our operation is safe. They can feel that, but I'm pretty sure it's not, it's, not, it's not our operation. I'm sure about it, it's not our operation, it's safe. How can they get in touch? Just, just call right here. I'm pretty sure the community, no matter what community around, they know they know my phone number. They said they have tried to talk to Monsanto in the past and they got nothing. No, we invite the community. The Juana Diaz mayor's office told us that Monsanto is rarely in touch with them. And while the company does hold community meetings, they do not field community questions or concerns. These fields that we're talking about in Juana Diaz, do you spray glyphosate there? Yes. How much glyphosate <clears throat> is being used in Puerto Rico by your company? I don't know. I don't know that. We don't, we don't, we don't have that, that number. Again, we don't have a, a commercial office here, so we, we don't have that kind of yeah. statistic. Why would you want to continue using a chemical like glyphosate that is being blamed for cancer? There, 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 there's over 800 st studies uh, that uh, guarantee the safety of glyphosate. Who carried those studies out? Uh, were they independent, independent scientists or were they Monsanto? Independent studies around the world. But evidence presented in a 2018 Roundup trial revealed many of those studies were actually heavily influenced and in some cases even edited by Monsanto. Even the EU's decision to permit the use of glyphosate was based on a German study which plagiarized from Monsanto reports. And while the EPA insists glyphosate does not cause cancer, the World Health Organization says it's probably carcinogenic. Puerto Rico is suffering from a $123 billion debt crisis, and yet Monsanto has continued to receive massive tax incentives to operate here. At the same time, a lack of investment in the agricultural sector has led Puerto Rico to import 85% of its food. I wanted to know why Puerto Rico's government continues to be so generous to corporations like Monsanto. So I went to the governor. These agrochemical companies like Monsanto are basically getting the perfect setup in places like Puerto Rico. And they have billions, whereas you're billions in debt. So do they really need these tax incentives? Well, the, the thing is, we've been in a position of disadvantage um, because of um, our, our colonial treatment uh, in Puerto Rico. So tax incentives, uh, tax uh, breaks that we've had have really been our only tool of economic development that we've had in, in Puerto Rico. People tend to think that, for example, tourism is our biggest economic driver. Really, uh, you know, these transnational companies represent anywhere from 42 to 46 percent of our economy. Puerto Rico is now importing more than 85 percent of its food. At the same time, one could argue you're giving away your most fertile land to these billionaire multinational corporations like Monsanto. Is that in the best interest of the Puerto Rican people? Our strategy has been to change that, right? Uh, our aim is very aggressive is to uh, change from that 15% that we produce to a 30% so that we reduce that dependency to uh, 70%. We have some of the most fertile uh, ground uh, in the world, but there, there needs to be a certain driver uh, and certain incentives so that uh, local agricultures can uh, flourish and that uh, they can see the value to, to being and participating in the economy. So we're up in the mountains right now, and we're on our way to meet some folks who are resisting Monsanto by taking farming into their own hands. Josue, Pamela, and their two daughters live here and grow most of the food they consume on their small farm. We grow tomatoes, we grow cabbages, um, yautia, we grow coriander, kale, um, celery, um, chives, berries. <laughs> There is one that got out of the fence. Uh-oh, no, we need to put you back in, two of them. Yes. How? Oh my gosh. Well, three of them are out. <laughs> what do you think about people who might respond to you saying that this type of farming is idealistic and you can't scale it up to the masses and feed everyone in the world? This is a personal thing for me, but I don't believe that I have to feed the masses. I believe more in a lot of people feeding the masses a lot of people farming. And that's not idealistic. A lot of small farms is more realistic. 
it's more um, sustainable and it's less, uh, less harmful for the whole environment. We fight to produce our food, to have a way of life that is not, not just only for people, but for the whole planet, for the animals, for the, the plants. The